Greetings and salutations as we listen to the maestro himself, John P. Key, uh, through other apparatuses. Of course, we do not own the rights to the music, <clears throat> but this is our Sunday evening playback. In our Sunday evening playback, we're going to recap what we had discussed on Sunday morning. God always gives us more revelation knowledge, more insight, second, third, fourth, fifteenth time through. So we're just grateful for John P. Key helping us set the atmosphere. atmosphere. We know that it is him that keeps us. We know that it's him that has made us and blesses us in spite of us. With the Sunday evening playback tonight, it's interesting uh, that these men, the maestro Luke 24, starting at 25, Jesus meets these men. He meets these men in their place of uncertainty. He meets these men when they are unsure. He meets these men in a place of unbelief. And for many of us, we've been met in some unsure places, at some uncertain places, in some places of unbelief. And it has brought us to a place in our life where we can literally say our heart has been broken. Do we trust the God to heal our hearts when they've been broken? Better yet, do we even know the God that can heal us when and while we are broken? How do we move from a heartbreak to a heartburn? In this Sunday evening playback, we just want to just shift our minds and our motives to the particular place of the two individuals. One named Cleophas, the other was unnamed. Put them, ourselves in their shoes. <clears throat> As we've walked from the place of defeat, and let's just be honest, they have walked or they are walking from the place of defeat. And all of us at some point in our life have experienced defeat. I remember as a junior high ball player, high school, uh, there were times when we just didn't win every game. And the walk back to the locker room, the walk to the bus, the ride back home, it was not the celebratory. There was no celebration. And here these men find themselves in a situation where they cannot celebrate where there's no pomp and circumstance after the Passover. They are literally defeated, <clears throat> walking in dread, walking in disappointment. But God is about to take their dread, their defeat and their disappointment and use that for their development. Sometimes God has to allow us to go through dread, disappointment, and defeat. God can use anything to develop us. And I have learned in life, failures are not final. They are places and points in our life where we really understand how God can take a misfortune and a mishap and bring us to the place where we can say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, these men had to understand that remediation was necessary. And sometimes you have to go back 
and revisit. Go back. Check for understanding. Go back. Renew. Go back. And bring up some of the victories of the past or even failures to make sure that God can move you from heartbreak to heartburn. Before I get in deeper into the discussion, I will use this illustration. Remember, this is just our Sunday evening playback. Colonel Sanders was well beyond his years when he birthed Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well beyond his years. Well beyond his years. Rejected several times, but he didn't give up. He could have stayed in that place of rejection. He could have stayed in that place of defeat and said, well, it's not for me. But he used that as fuel to push him forward. He maintained his integrity. He maintained his innovative spirit. He maintained a level of passion that he had for his vision that he was able to give us Kentucky's best version of fried chicken. Yes, y'all. There are still greatness and great things in you and from you. You just got to be willing to have the tenacity to get to that place where God can do it even in your brokenness, even in your disappointments, even when you're down, even when you are Trodden and downcast. God can still do it. What makes this remediation though necessary? God had to bring them to a place in their understanding where they could truly understand that what they understood, they did not understand. Yes, God had to bring them to a place in their understanding that what they understood, they didn't understand. And he, 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 he makes reference, <clears throat> excuse me, of some terms that seem to be demeaning and derogatory, but God uses them to develop them. What were the terms? Foolish and slow. Demeaning and derogatory to us in the natural but God is God. He's not a God that demeans. He's not a God who comes off as derogatory. He does not have to be a bully. He does not have to throw around his intellectual weight and muscles. He's God. So even in this Sunday evening playback, when we start talking about the remediation piece, I use this as um, just the thrust. Jesus had to remediate one of the churches. Yes, he did. He said, I need you to go back. <laughs> the first love. Those first words. Remediation was needed. Not in a derogatory sense. Not in a demeaning sense. But he used that to develop their conviction. Mm hmm Jesus used the appropriate words to develop their conviction. Not only did Jesus develop their conviction, Jesus developed their conversation. <laughs> Once their conviction was developed and their conversation was developed, then Jesus was ready to develop their character. Then they left saying, did my hearts burn? So in this Sunday evening playback, when we talk about remediation being necessary, know this. He wants to develop your conviction. Mm -hmm. He wants to do that. He wants you to develop your conversation because there will come a point in your life when you might have to change conversation to get what you are expecting. Your future possibly and is somewhat predicated on what you say. What do you mean, Brother Pastor? The thief on the cross. Conviction. 
conversation. Just remember me. Then that character will develop. So in this Sunday evening playback, as we just deal with what is needed and necessary, as we begin to understand how remediation is a good thing and how God uses it to bless us in spite of us, know this. He's just trying to develop you. Look at your defeats. Look at your disappointments. Say, Lord, develop me. Let me change my language. Because once I change my language, I know that there is a bright side somewhere just in the fact that I've changed my language. Job changed his language. After what he went through, even after talking down upon the situation, Job said, Blessed be the name. And then Job got back everything he lost and some because he had to change his conversation, his communication. He had to change it. He had to change his conviction. He had to change. His character changed. And sometimes God allows things to happen in our life to change us. Aren't you glad you changed? The songwriter said, what a wonderful change has come over me. Just change. Change me, Lord. If you have to remediate me, bring me to a place where I'm going to have to review and revisit. Please let that change take place. Closing on this. Remediation is not a bad thing because it brings us place to a place of remembrance. On that night, Jesus Christ took bread. When he break, he blessed. He said, take, eat, this is my body. In the same like manner, he took the cup. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. If you're going to move from a heartbreak to a heartburn, just remember, remediation is necessary. Yes, I'll say it again. Remediation is necessary. There comes a point in your life where you have to say, Lord, just change me. Bring me to the place where you can remediate me, where you can help me focus where you can help me be fashioned, where you can help me do the things needed and necessary, where you can help me be what you call for me to be in this last and evil days. We came in with John P. Key. We're going out with John P. Key. John P. Key changed me. Thank you, you two. Thank you. And remember this, folks. Remediation is necessary. Pastor Cornelius Hill of the Ephesian Primitive Baptist Church, 1506 22nd Avenue North, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. This is your Sunday evening playback. Hey, please share the video by text, by Twitter, by email, however you want to share it. Share the video. And if you have not subscribed, Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Peace and blessings. Love you. Pastor Cornelius here.